Excellencies, um, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, dear members of the Horasis Vision community, welcome back. It has been a very long day, uh, starting in the during the Asian uh, early hours and morning hours, and we cover so many uh, topics uh, from globalization, from um, uh, combating and fighting COVID, uh, to trade and the new trade arrangements in Asia, and we are feeling a lot of um, optimism. I'm very Glad uh, to welcome Rosalind Madison, who is the chief editor editor uh, in chief of, for government news at Bloomberg, based in London, who um, lived in Asia for 18 years and uh, knows uh, the region very well. Um, and before I call on you, Ross, uh, just uh, want to say a few words of um, thanking everybody uh, for joining today. Uh, all our partners, all the The government's um, working with us. We had um, five ministers today from various countries and, of course, uh, many captains of industry. So my sincere thanks to everybody. Uh, it was a great pleasure working for you with you. And uh, the session, of course, is still going on with uh, two more rounds. And um, now I would like to call on you, Ross, uh, as the rapporteur of the summit and uh, ask you for your uh, observations and maybe recommendations and some key takeaways from the summit. Well, thank you, Frank, and thanks for inviting me. It's been very interesting hearing your comments and the broader discussion because, as you were saying, it comes against that sort of more encouraging news about vaccines and hopes that even as countries are battling further waves of the virus that we'll get on top of it uh, while recognising, of course, that the damage has been incredible to human life, to societies, to economies, and there's a lot of work to do to rebuild those economies to avoid sort of protracted large-scale unemployment, poverty. Um, we've, of course, heard recently that India is in recession, even as China's economy is regaining momentum. And I was struck by the IMF last month saying that economic activity is expected to contract by 2.2% this year, uh, particularly weak in emerging markets like India, Malaysia and the Philippines, um, and that it does expect that growth will pick up to 6.9% next year, even as returning to full capacity is a long slog. But what also struck me in that, Frank, and what you were saying in the closing plenary recently with other speakers is the opportunity in that for governments and business. Do you rebuild your economy in a different way? Can you make growth more sustainable, more equal, greener? Are there new ways for companies to grow and adapt? Uh, there was a speaker just recently talking about how companies can do a full reboot that even as supply chains, you know, established long-term supply chains, particularly involving China, are challenged, there are opportunities for new supply chains to emerge within Asia and opportunities on the services side. And then the collective question of how we operate together, because we've seen real questions in recent years about multilateralism. And the idea of countries operating, putting themselves first is not really new. Uh, and it's kind of natural as well. But we'll next year give us an opportunity to work together better and all those threads will run through Asia in 2021 uh, with those encouraging signs and those challenges and of course the RCEP trade deal Frank which you mentioned it doesn't include the US or India but it's definitely progress it's the world's largest trade deal done in the middle of the pandemic covering nearly a third of the world's people and its GDP and that other countries like Hong Kong may yet join and India well we heard that's an open question Uh, but Bloomberg estimates that that trade deal will boost China's GDP by 0.5% over the years to 2030 and also give South Korea and Japan a particular boost. And it might just nudge the US to join a separate trade pact, that one that started out many years ago, we all know, called the TPP. And the odds of that may rise just very slightly with the incoming administration in the US, of course, of Joe Biden. So we've seen lots of talk uh, in this session about challenges, and opportunities, um, particularly like nations in Asia feeling squeezed still perhaps between China and America. They want to work with every country and they don't want to have to pick a side. But it's interesting to see the greater engagement in Asia by Europe, for example, and by Canada. And that's something we'll probably see more of, uh, potentially also the UK, as we finally maybe, fingers crossed, get Brexit done <laughs> at the end of this year. So I wanted to say hey, thank you to Frank again uh, for hosting all of this, for pulling together a fascinating meeting that's been full of really interesting speakers and insight. And thank you for allowing me to make these brief closing remarks. Thanks so much. For